tonight on The South Today. One boy is lucky to be back on shore thanks to the quick thinking of his brother. A Port Chalmers museum is on a roll to find a home for some classic musical items. And a Te Reo Māori teacher marks a milestone as work begins on a $50 million complex in Ashburton. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. Dramatic details have emerged of a courageous rescue near Milton at the weekend. A 14-year-old boy managed to pull his younger brother out of very rough three-metre-high waves on Saturday afternoon at the remote Crystals Beach. An afternoon on South Otago's Crystals Beach could have turned into tragedy, if not for the quick and brave actions of 14-year-old Kayla Candigota Gamage. A big wave come and my brother fall down and a, uh, another wave come and my brother uh, and was away to the sea. Without a second thought, the teenager ran into the water to try and help his younger brother. But it was far from a straightforward rescue with the pair battling strong waves as high as three metres. A big wave come and we go down. He says he and 11-year-old Kithmi managed to get back to shore through the angry sea. The parents are thankful to the many people who also helped to assist the family. While the boys say the experience is unlikely to put them off going back into the water when summer arrives. In South Otago, The South Today. A 71-year-old man is in hospital after suffering a serious attack from another man who was smashing shop windows in central Dunedin overnight. Dunedin police say the alleged offender was responsible for smashing large front windows in several George Street shops in the early hours of this morning. He also beat up an elderly passerby who challenged him about what he was doing. The 71-year-old man's in a stable condition in Dunedin Hospital. CCTV footage showed him being hit by an object before falling to the ground where the assault continued. Police arrested a 31-year-old man and charged him with intent to injure and four charges of intentional damage. The alleged offender appeared in the Dunedin District Court today, remanded in custody to reappear next Thursday. The Port Chalmers Maritime Museum has put out a call for somebody to adopt a collection of about 60 pianola rolls discovered during a recent stock take. The rolls are made for special player pianos, but museum curators say they don't have enough room for them and would like them to go to a musical home. Holding a suite of tunes, but with nothing to play them on. Port Chalmers Historic Society President Brian McCormick says they've discovered about 60 pianola rolls, which they're hoping can be of some use to someone. We're very short on space for storage, for, and proper storage needs to be up to museum standard, which um, we haven't got. Pianola, or player pianos, have been around since the late 1800s and are a device where rolls of thick cardboard with holes punched out trigger piano keys to play songs. McCormick says the rolls they've discovered cover a range of music, from waltzes and foxtrots to show tunes and popular music from the early to mid 1900s. He says the rolls in their possession are in good condition. The boxes that they're in are a wee bit dusty, um, you know, because they've been sitting there for so long in the, in the corner. But um, when you take them out of the boxes, you can see that most of them are, are still in very good condition. The museum is asking anyone with a player piano who'd like some or all of them to get in touch. In Dunedin, the South Today. Firefighters across the country have decided to stop their month-long industrial strike action. Firefighters have closed stations over the past two Fridays as part of a series of planned hour-long strikes. The Professional Firefighters Union started the action in a bid to gain better pay and working conditions for firefighters across the country. The stalemate has finally improved following a meeting with Fire and Emergency New Zealand and Internal Affairs Minister Jan Tanetti. Both parties will now take part in facilitated mediation with the assistance of an independent mediator. Otago cricketers may have a better chance of preparing for the upcoming season with the help of a new marquee. It's been erected at Tonga Park and will help the Otago Volts and Otago Sparks in the lead-up to the summer cricket season. 
Sports people outside will continue to play football for the rest of the season, while cricketers will be able to train on a grass surface. Otago Vaults captain Hamish Rutherford says it's amazing to be able to play on grass so early in the season. The marquee will be packed up again by the end of October, but the Otago Cricket Association's hoping to build a permanent structure in the next few years. The process to build a new $50 million complex at Ashburton College got underway this week. The school's Te Reo Māori teacher led a blessing and earth-turning event on Monday morning to mark the milestone. Ashburton College's Te Reo Māori teacher Tipa Ne Philip stepped in on behalf of Kaumatua to wear a king at the last minute to bless the ground where a new $50 million complex is to be built. Principal Ross Priest invited the school's youngest students, Lily Allen and Logan Bradford, to undertake the turning of the sod, breaking the ground on the new project. Great turnout. We would have had uh, 60, 60 people plus uh, staff, so probably 100 all told, and beautiful sunny day, organised by Matua Tipani, and um, just great to have the process underway. The new classrooms and offices will be built in two stages. With the first 32 rooms expected to be complete and ready for use by the 2024 school year. And the second group of classrooms are expected to be ready for the start of the 2025 school year. Ashburton College has a current role of nearly 1,240 students, which is expected to grow. In Ashburton, the South today. Queenstown business leaders have tucked into discussions around inclusiveness at an event this week. The Pride in Business Lunch brought together local companies with the aim of highlighting the importance of a diverse work environment. A dining decoration designed to prompt inclusive conversation. Pride flags adorned Queenstown's Bazaar restaurant as part of a business lunch this week. The event was held as part of the Winter Pride Festival as a way of celebrating the LGBTQ plus community and its role in local business. This is an opportunity to bring business leaders and business people in Queenstown together to talk about why rainbow inclusion is so important in our organisations. It's the first time the Pride in Business lunch has been held and like the food, the event went down well. I'm really proud that we've, one, um, got this event happening and two, that it's sold out and that there's such a, a great interest from all businesses in the community. Around 110 business leaders mingled at the lunch, getting fresh perspectives about what pride means in their industry. Oh look, pride in business for me means um, cultivating true cultures of inclusion, making sure people feel like they belong. Um, ultimately we know that when people are they feel heard, they feel seen, they feel validated, they're way more productive in work. Winter Pride runs through until Sunday. In Queenstown, the South Today. If I can I still to come on the South Today. A diving platform proves challenging in the build of a new Christchurch sports centre. And we'll tell you how you can meet some of the mayoral candidates for the upcoming local body elections. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Father's Day Garrick Sale. He's taken 24% off absolutely everything. Plus pay it off with 24 months interest free. Only at John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street. And my mate John.
If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Tēnā koe, welcome back. Work is progressing well on the last of Christchurch's anchor projects, a recreation and sports centre in the central city. But the installation of the centre's huge diving platforms has proved a challenging part of the build. A major milestone in the construction of the $317 million Pari Kori Recreation and Sports Centre as huge 5 and 7.5 metre diving platforms are gently lowered into place. It's been over 20 years since there was a, a dive platform of a scale constructed in New Zealand, so it's a really um, critical part of a build. The recreation and sports centre bordering Morehouse Ave will be the largest aquatic and indoor sports facility of its kind in New Zealand. Work is also progressing in the community sports courts area, with the first of the huge dividing curtains installed. Like the hoops, the curtains can be dropped all at once or individually with the touch of a button on a wireless tablet. Construction of the anchor project is being managed by Atakaro Limited and jointly funded by the Crown and the Christchurch City Council. The council will be charged with this operation once the facility is complete. Parikori will include a 10-lane 50-metre pool with seating for more than 1,000 spectators, a diving pool, nine indoor sports courts and five hydra slides. Estimated construction date of the 30,000 square metre facility is expected to be late 2023. In Christchurch, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A 14-year-old boy has told how he guided his younger brother to safety during rough three metre high waves near Milton. The Port Chalmers Maritime Museum is looking for a musical home for 60 pianola player roles it recently uncovered. And the process begins for a new $50 million complex at Ashburton College with the milestone marked this week. Local body election season is in full swing across the country with billboards and advertising already underway for many candidates. Voting papers are due to be sent out from the 16th of September, with voting running through until the 8th of October. Here on Channel 39, we'll be broadcasting mayoral forums from both Invercargill and Queenstown over the next month. We'll also be hosting two mayoral forums ourselves here in our Dunedin studio, meeting the candidates for Dunedin Mayor. I'll be co-hosting these forums alongside Dave Gooselink, who joins me now. Welcome Dave. So um, how are we going to get things set to work for our Dunedin shows? Thanks Hannah. Well, there are 11 candidates uh, standing this year's local body elections in Dunedin as uh, for Mayor of Dunedin for the next three years. So, And all of them have agreed to be part of our coverage, which is great. So we'll be splitting these 11 candidates into two uh, one-hour long shows, giving viewers the chance to meet the various personalities and get an idea of their ideas, their priorities for Dunedin City over the next term. But to make it fair for everyone, um, we're going to conduct a live draw on air now to make uh, it clear as to which candidates will feature in each of the two shows. So I'll get you to help me with that. Sure, sounds so like a we'll plan. Get you to draw. So I've got all 11 uh, names uh, within this box here. So we'll draw the names for the show. All right, so shall we draw how many? Six for, for the first one? Yes, let's go for six. All right, all right. You give it a shake up after this. First one, Lee Vandervis. Lee Vandervis. Mm -hmm. Sitting uh, city councillor. Number two. Uh, Aaron Hawkins. Aaron Hawkins, he's the sitting mayor of Dunedin. Mm -hmm. uh, Mandy Mayhem Bollock. 
Mandy Mayan Bullock, well known in uh, Waikwiti and the community board there. Cool, right, that's the first three. Who we got? Bill Acklin. Bill Acklin's a uh, well known musician and a former city councillor who stepped away. All right, to number five for the first forum, Sophie Barker. Sophie Barker is also another sitting uh, city councillor on the current uh, council. Okay, and so the last and one the last for the one first. To show, show Jules Radich. And Jules Radich, which is uh, who is also a sitting city councillor under the Team Dunedin ticket. So that's uh, for one of the shows. Mm -hmm. um, we have two shows because we've got 11 candidates. We're splitting them into two. So we will draw five for uh, five names remaining for the second show. We, some people know, give it a, know but give it a shake up. there's only five names. <laughs> know, you can only do that. But let's see who the other five names in the list are. Okay. Richard Seeger. Richard Seeger is uh, a new candidate. Uh, it's been around the rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, followed by Jet Grishinsky. Jed Grzynski is, uh, I think, the youngest candidate, if I'm right, in the um, standing for mayor in this forum. Um, was seen in the uh, student debate uh, recently. Mm -hmm. uh, Carmen Houlihan. Carmen Houlihan is a, another sitting city councillor in her first term currently. Uh, uh, yeah, standing, what well, originally was under a ticket, was independent now. Second to last, Pamela Taylor. And Pamela Taylor is a well-known personality uh, around Dunedin and uh, in forums. Lucky last, David Joseph Milne. And David Joseph Milne, I think, is a local, I think he's involved with uh, art or creatives in Dunedin. Fantastic. Yes, if I, can we just uh, recap those names? Yeah. So we'll go through uh, the, the uh, five you've just drawn there. So they'll be show one, the five in the show one. We have um, David Milne, Jet Grzynski, mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying your name right there, Jet, uh, Pamela Taylor, Carmen Houlihan, and Richard Seeger. That'll be uh, the first show of the, uh, the piece. Uh, and the second show, we have uh, the pieces here. I'll line um, them up for you. There we are. There we go. have uh, Mandy Mayhem Bullock. We have Jules Radich. We have Sophie Barker, Bill Acklin, Aaron Hawkins, and Lee Vandivis. So that'll be the two shows. Now, two one hour shows will also include some of uh, you uh, people of Dunedin in it as well. Hannah has been hitting the streets. We're getting your views on a variety of issues and um, concerns that you have in the upcoming uh, election uh, and seeing where your priorities lie. Um, so we'll be mi mixing those into two one hour shows. They will be, um, yeah, uh, covering quite a range of issues. We'll also have those in Invercargill and Queenstown ones. So, um, so essentially that's it. So I guess that's the lineup sorted then, Dave. Thank you for going through that. Where are our viewers going to be able to see these shows? Well, these uh, two Dunedin mural programs will be broadcast on Channel 39 a number of times in the, in the lead up to the election. Um, so right through to the close of voting on the 8th of September. So, and those programs will be broadcast a number of times uh, on, uh, with the first broadcast planned for next Thursday night at 7.30pm here on Channel 39. The Invercargill and Queenstown forums, which are being shot in conjunction with the Southland Business Chamber and the Queenstown Chamber of Commerce, they'll also screen multiple times on Channel 39. They'll also be available on the ODT's uh, website. So check your local listings, all the Otago Daily Times and all our election coverage, Dunedin, Invercargill and Dunedin, will be available to watch on odt.co.nz uh, on demand at your leisure. Well, thank you for coming in, Dave Gooselink. We look forward to working through those mural forums over the coming weeks. Look forward to a good election season. Thanks, Hannah. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, still quite warm tomorrow with the northwesterly sticking around, but from Saturday onwards, a spell of much colder southwesterly airflow will arrive. Heading to the top of the South Island, it's looking fine with northerlies through here tomorrow. 19 in Nelson, 15 with a spot of rain over in Greymouth, while Christchurch is looking cloudy and will break the 20 degree mark for the second day in a row. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, the warm weather continues with high cloud in northerlies. Ashburton gets a gorgeous 20 degrees, 19 in Timaru and Awamaru will warm up to 18 before some late rain. 
Westwards now to the central lakes. Showery and cloudy with northwesterlies as we move through here. Wanaka and Queenstown head for 16 and expect a high of 17 down in Alexandra. Heading further south, westerlies with showers are on the horizon. A triple threat as far as temperatures go with Balclutha, Gore and the Catlins all getting a high of 15 degrees. Now down to the deep south. Cloudy tonight with westerlies in Invercargill down to 11. Another cloudy day tomorrow but the temperatures cool down slightly after a beauty today. Expect rain and westerlies with a high of 15. Into the weekend, showers and south westerlies on Saturday with a high of 12. And lastly, heading to Dunedin. Cloudy tonight with south westerlies and a low of 12. Friday, expect high clouds, late rain and northerlies up to 18. More of the same on Saturday with a high of 16. And that's the news this Thursday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite a popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.